We are doing more factor tractoring today. So the first thing you want to do is instead of writing it down like this, if it's in your book like that, you want to write it down in order, descending by exponent. So like the x squared goes first, then the negative 6x, then the negative 7. A lot of people mess up when they don't write it in order, so I highly recommend you show a step like this, putting it in order, and then your answer. So when we factor tractor, you guys, we're looking for two sets of parentheses. Yes. Which means like this times this, the first two terms, it's the opposite of foiling. Remember when we would multiply out a binomial times a binomial? It's the opposite of that. This times this has to equal this. So this has to be x times x because that has to equal x squared, okay? And then your next two terms, they have to do two things. They have to multiply to be whatever is your last number, okay? That's what you got to put in order. And they have to add to be whatever is this middle term, okay? There's only one choice for what multiplies to 7. Everybody agree it has to be 1 times 7. That's the only thing that multiplies to be 7, right, is 1 times 7. Now, they have to add to a negative number, okay? So in order to add to a negative, I need a negative 7 and a positive 1. Now, make sure it does both things, okay? Make sure it adds to negative 6 and multiplies to negative 7. So a positive times a negative multiplies to be a negative. Yes? So when you put this in either order or like Yes. The order does not matter. So you could have x minus 7 and then x plus 1. That's the same thing. Yes? Is that all the work you need to show? That is all the work you need to show. Yes. This should be not a lot of work. All right. Factor, tractor. Okay, write this down. Negative x squared plus 6x plus 16. Now, this one, you have to show a step because of the negative in the front. A lot of people get super confused, and they try to factor it with the negative in, and they're like, do I put 1x as negative and 1 is not? No, you don't do that at all, okay? So what you want to do is first get it out of the whole thing. So you factor out a negative 1 from every single term. So the negative comes out, and it changes all the signs, okay? So I take it out of the x squared, and I get a positive. I take it out of this positive 6x, so I get a negative, and I take it out of this positive here, so I get a negative, okay? Now, if I multiplied this back through, you'd get the same thing. Yeah, I wrote 6, but that should be 16. Thank you very much. All right? So now I can factor tractor. After you deal with the negative, it's not hard. I would like you to show the one step where you factor out the negative, if it has a negative, okay? You only have to do that if the x squared term is negative, right? So now I would be like, oh, yeah, what multiplies to give me x squared? And that's obviously x times x, okay? And then I need two things that multiply to be negative 16 and add to be negative 6. Yes, 8 and 2. If you don't know, you should list out every possible factor just so you know. You're like, all right, there's 1 times 16, there's 2 times 8, and there's 4 times 4. That's all possible combinations that could multiply to be 16. But I need to be able to add or subtract to 6. So the only ones that add or subtract to 6 are this one. And they have to add to a negative 6. So I have to have a negative 8 and a positive 2. Those also then multiply to a negative 16. All right, so order doesn't matter here. I'm going to put a plus 2 and a minus 8, but you could put a minus 8 and a plus 2, okay? And then you're done. And you're like, yay. Okay. Let's do this one. First thing I would do is write it down in descending order by exponent, okay? I have a negative 3x to the fourth. I have a plus 21x cubed. And I have a plus 24x squared, all right? So, yes, you first need to find a GCF. You should technically always look for that first. The other ones didn't have a GCF, okay? But I would look for that always first. So what number can come out of all those? Everybody? Three. And how many X's are common? Two. And there's a negative in the front, which you want to pull out. Anytime there's a negative in the front, you want to factor it out first. So I'm going to take out a negative 3X squared and see what I have left. So if I take out a negative 3x squared from this, Christian, what do I get? 
Right here. First term, I take out a three, negative 3x three squared. What's left? Yeah. Okay. And now the next term, Lucy, what would be left if I took out a negative 3x squared? Good. A negative 7x. Okay. And Hank, on the last one, what would be left? Yep. A negative 8. Okay. So now I leave this in front and I factor tractor. So I have x and x. And I say to myself, self, what multiplies to negative 8 and adds to negative 7? Yeah, James, what do you think multiplies to negative 8 and adds to negative 7? Do you know? 1 and 8. I agree with you. So 1 and 8. And Alex R, which one has to be negative to add to negative 7? I agree, the 8. <laughs> All right. So you need a plus 1 and a minus 8 to add to negative 7, and those also multiply to negative 8. And you just keep that GCF in front after you take it out. So make sure you still have it in the front of your final answer. Some people forget to, like, write it here. Okay? All right. More triangles. Go ahead and write this down. We love triangles in Saxon. So this one's pretty cool. We've got embedded triangles again, but we have a right triangle as well. So we can add in another lovely skill that we know. And then everything is really similar to what we did actually with the embedded triangles the other day. Um, so if I wanted to find A first, since it's a right triangle, what can we do, you guys? Pythagorean theorem. So I would do 5 squared plus 4 squared equals a squared. Again, this is the hypotenuse, so it has to be on this side of the equation when you're doing Pythagorean theorem. All right, so that would be 25 plus 16 equals a squared. When you add those, you get 41, and then you would square root both sides. So I know that this side right here is the square root of 41. All right, <coughs> now, if I choose to draw them separate, just so you guys can see what we're doing, you could do that. So I've got this little one is 5, 4, and now I know square root of 41. And then let's make this one the big one. Okay. And so if this is the big one, this is C. What should I write down for this side, you guys? Yes. Be sure you add. You get 8. And what should I write down for this entire side? Yeah, the square root of 41 plus b, or b plus the square root of 41, you can add in either order, right? Okay, so it's like that whole side. So I could do, uh, let's say, 5 over 8 equals 4 over c. I actually recommend finding c this way, okay, using the sum. I would do that. All right, so cross multiply, I have 5c equals 32 and divide by 5, so we get 32 fifths, right? Okay, I would not recommend doing this, but you can, okay? To find this lovely side right here, you could say 5 over 8 equals the square root of 41 over the square root of 41 plus b. However, there's an easier way, okay? For this one, I would not do it that way. Here's why. If you look back here at these lines, these are parallel, okay? Yeah, so how do I know they're parallel? Because those are both right angles, so they have to be corresponding, so these have to be parallel lines. If you use the fact that they're parallel lines, anybody remember how we did it and what the sort of easy way is, Sophia? 5 over 3 equals the square root of 41 over b. That's the way I would do it, okay? You can say this over this equals this over this, okay? That's much easier. You cannot do that for the c side, okay? How come you can't do that for the c side? It's like a whole side of the big triangle. There's no way to, like, break it up at all, okay? So you can only do it for the b side. So if you do this, which I would recommend... Then we would cross multiply. I'll just show you because it's got that radical in there. This would be 5b. This would be 3 root 41. So you just leave that lovely root 41. You don't have to, like, do anything, okay? And then divide by 5. 
So your final answer for B is 3 root 41 over 5. Okay? You would get the same thing if you did it this way. It's just way more work. All right? So I would use the parallel lines and proportional segments for that. All right, let's try a whiteboard. <laughs> All right, let's try the next one. All right, you guys, next one, put it in order. All right, you guys, last one. We've got the triangles. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> <laughs> 